Just imagine somebody comes frantically knocking at your front door and you open the door and they ask you if you own a, a black and tan, black and white dog. And they tell you that the dog's laying down by the bottom of your yard in what appears to be a trap around its head. Just imagine how that would make you feel. Well, this is what happened to Doug and Denise McCurtain in Gresham, Oregon, a suburb of Portland. So I ran right out the door and went down the side where her husband was trying desperately to get a trap off of Maggie's head. I had yelled, is it Maggie, is it Maggie? And he didn't say anything to me at all. Um, and I just tried helping. She was still breathing, um, but she wasn't moving. Her eyes were open and um, he just kept frantically trying to get it off and he was yelling and yelling, how do you get this off? Why is this here? Why would you put this here? Yelling at the neighbor over and over again, um, why would you put this here? And he kept saying, it's not mine. Um, he told him to go get some tools and the neighbor disappeared. And the end of the path, right where the path ends, is where the trap was. Right here. And I think that's still part of the, the framing of the trap that was left. So there was one, one trap set right here, and the other trap was set right here. This is the one I found after um, the state trooper came out. That's this, you know, a walkway where the street is. So yeah, anyone could just come straight down here where you can see their footprints, you know, kind of like a, a worn pathway. So people do walk down, come down with a dog, dog goes potty or, you know, whatever. Um, and no signs, no nothing. It's like a big sports field in our backyard. And to, to look at that as an association or a trapper and go, hmm, where should I put these traps? It's, it's obvious, not here. Um, and heck, knock on my door. <laughs> Tell me. I mean, how hard is that? Hey, you know, we're gonna set these traps. Um, uh, tell me about them. And you just wanna make sure your kids and dogs stay away from them. You know, I've been hired by the association to put these traps out. I'm just letting you know they're gonna be back in your, right behind your backyard. I mean, I just can't imagine that wouldn't be a case. Standard. Every year, Predator Defense gets dozens of phone calls and emails regarding the poisoning and trapping of domestic dogs and cats by wildlife services. The pattern that we've seen over and over for well over a decade now is that when they do kill one of these animals, someone's pet, that they often go underground. They, they hunker down, pull their traps, and don't contact the people whose pets have been killed and basically hope that nobody will contact them and then they just move on. Unfortunately, in the vast majority of these cases, this is what happens. Most people are ill-prepared to take on this federal agency. The day I sat in the car talking to the trooper, um, I put all my sadness into fighting for Maggie. And I was very discouraged with everything I got and the night that I talked to you, I sat in the car, I was actually at my son's soccer practice and I was supposed to be at a meeting, that's why I was sitting there. And I couldn't drive home, I was in tears. And I'm like, you know what, I called my husband and I said, you know what, I think I found someone who's gonna help us fight for Maggie. And I was so excited, I was, I, I called, was, I called a couple of other people afterwards and I'm like, I found someone to help me fight for Maggie, to find justice for her. And it, the more the time that goes, my kids, you know, my little guy, Zach, he's nine. He'll say to me, hey, mom, how's the fight for, for Maggie going? What's, what's going on? He wants to know um, why and what. Um, and my other kids, you know, they, they keep asking me, when is this going to happen? When are people going to find out about Maggie? And um, it, it's, it drives me, the anger drives me to keep going because there's nothing else I can do. I, I can't forget her. I can't walk down the dog aisle in the grocery store without breaking tears still. Um, I have to avoid that part of Fred Myers, and when I have to go get cat food, it's just, it's hard to do because I cannot forget. Um, I have to keep going. And 
we're we're afraid we want to get another dog we want to love another animal we know maggie would want us to love another animal but we don't want to take the chance that next summer they're going to put another trap out there it's going to be someone else's dog it's going to be somebody's cat and then to feel like you're you're not safe kind of like the feeling like if someone come and broke in your house and stole all your stuff you know the next uh, month or so you're just listening for every crack or every every thing you hear, you're thinking, oh, you're getting broken in again. Um, all I can think of is, if I didn't know about that rule, what else can be happening to my property or, or to anything else that someone doesn't have to follow certain rules? If it's not a trap, what else is it? Is it something else? Is it poison? You know? uh, makes you think, makes you wonder. I would never imagine trapping in a residential neighborhood. It floors me that you can, that no matter who you are, government or not, government you're supposed to be protecting us, could put something so deadly in a residential neighborhood. That means that any other neighborhood, no matter how, how um, big the homes are, how small the homes are, it doesn't matter if they're backed up on a forest, if they're not, if they have a little pond, a little lake, every neighborhood is vulnerable for the same thing to happen if there aren't rules that you can't put it there. They can do it here, they can do it anywhere.